Here is a Holmes Fox VN. This is another one that Tori gave me. And this is a weird model. I have never seen one like this before. This is the same frame as the one that my uh, that was in the fifth grade classroom. But this has the newer pedal blade or whatever the heck you want to call it from very late 90s I guess. Now I actually have an extra blade that goes with the fifth grade classroom model. So I suppose I could always swap that blade in there and have two of them. But uh, it's more interesting like this because this is an unusual model. The guard spacing looks extremely thick as well. I think that it's slightly different than the other one. I have never seen one of these before and I had no idea that something like this even existed. Fortunately the blade seems to be in decent condition and it doesn't look like it's warped at all. So this does have... I forget what we said, is this, is this a McMillan motor or not? Um, it might be. It's dated 2-14-2001. So this is definitely like a, an unusual transitionary model. And it says the top is on the left so the motor is either not put in properly or Holmes did not care what orientation the motor is supposed to be in. I don't see why it would matter because there's no oil ports on this one. It says Holmes Products Corporation, more like it should say Holmes Garbage Corporation, thermally protected. What's the power? 2.1 amps. That's a lot of power for this blade set. So I think this actually might move some pretty serious air. And that's all just kind of near like that. These are very cheap VNs. Probably the cheapest available at the time. Yeah, it doesn't even have a proper handle. I'm not so much bothered by the switch in the front, although it's certainly not ideal if you was to use it in the window for exhaust. Uh, but not having the handle is just totally ridiculous. At the time, you had the Lasco 3733, which was selling with those early PSC motors. Now granted those were recalled, um, but I think those are probably a much better fan. At least it had a full handle, switch on the top, PSC motor, so it drew half the power. And those were very, very powerful, those early ones. Even though I suspect this one's going to be very powerful as well, I bet they were similar in performance. This one would have had little legs on the back, but they're, of course, long gone. All right, so we're testing at 119.5, uh, the volts. We'll begin on the low, which of course is the slowest speed. It's a nice, quiet, calm low. And uh, it's actually not moving much more air than I expected. I'm trying to get the camera out of the windstream here. This is actually fairly weak. Looks like the motor is, is bent or something. Yeah, I, I bet the 3733 is more powerful than this. It's not bad for the noise being made. It's very very quiet and decent airflow for the noise. I guess it's running at a very low RPM so we'll, we'll give it that much. Let's see how, how it works in the higher speeds. That's 0.66 amps. 16, 7, uh, 70 the watts, the power factor 0 0.88 the power factor. Is this PSC? No, it can't be. There's no capacitor in there. 0 0.88 is very, very high for a shaded pole motor. That's really odd. Usually, like, a good power factor for a shaded pole is, like, taps out in the 70, maybe 78, 75. I have never seen one draw that much power. You know what? This airflow is actually pushing pretty far. I can feel this across the room. 
Yeah, this is not bad. This is not bad at all. Now let's try the medium. There we go. There's a the power. That's throwing some good air now. Of course, it's horribly out of balance. But, oh, wow. That balance is atrocious on this thing. That's 1.04 the amps, 93 the watts, the power factor is 0 0.76 the power factor. That's much more like what I would have expected. And it's, it's throwing the air pretty good now. That's still not that loud. Now I think that this blade set was not all that bad. It's thin, it's flimsy, etc, etc. But in regards to performance, which is what we need to be talking about, I think it's halfway reasonable. It's not overly loud, and it pushes a decent amount of air without needing to draw a lot of power. Let's move to the high. Whoa. That's pretty strong. I'm not tipping over though. That's 2.09 amps. Shout out. 186 the watts. 0 0.76 the power factor. I don't know why the power factor is so high on low. That's very odd. So it's horrifically out of balance, as you can see in here. But it's it's strong. Seems like the bearings are in decent shape. Just for the sake of curiosity, let's swap in that other blade and see how the performance changes. I would assume that this blade is totally out of balance as well, because they seem to all be out of balance. You know, Holmes can't make anything right. Um, so it probably is totally out of balance as well. But uh, let's just see. How the performance compares. Unless of course the blade is stuck on there. If it's stuck on there real good then we'll just leave it alone. But if it comes off easy we'll swap on this other blade and see how it compares. That's stupid. The switch attaches to the cage. Oh, you should have unplugged it first. Ah! <clears throat> uh, unfortunately, the blade is kind of stuck on there. I can certainly get it off. There's many ways to get this off, but ah, there we go. I got it. Okay. The motor's already warm. That's the problem with these senior pole motors, they're just so horrifically inefficient. So this should be the same shaft size. No, it's not the same. Well, I guess this is a fail, and we cannot actually put this on there. Alright, so it's a totally different model. It's, it's not as transitionary as I was thought, I guess. It's a completely different design. This is probably a three quarters the depth only as this one is. So, oh well, can't do that. It has to be only this play, which is fine. Um, but now that we have this out, you can see that the blade really is not warped at all. It's absurdly flimsy, and this is why I think the brace blade one is superior because the brace connects here to here, which prevents it from folding under air resistance. So. People flip out about how bad 
the brace blade design is, but I, I really don't see it. I actually think the brace blade design is pretty good you know, for, for what the product is. Sure, the plastic should be strong enough such that it doesn't need a, a brace. I agree with that, but if it's not going to be, at least the brace fixes the problem. You now this blade just kind of folds under any resistance. So if this was if this had the brace blade on it, I bet this would move a lot more air. Now I have a liquid box fan, which the blade is very badly warped on. And I, I wonder if this is the same size blade shaft. If it is, then I could swap this blade around when I want to use the other fans. Because this blade's in good shape. Well, I wanted to try both, but I can't. Oh well. We'll just finish putting these screws back on. That'll wrap up the video. It's a little bit messed up on the top here. There's like a washer to, to grab it where it cracked. That works. It's not ideal, but that's the job done. So there we go. A very unusual Holmes box fan from the early 2000s. Lose some pretty good air. It really does. I think that blade takes a lot more hate than it deserves.